Swedish police have stepped up to combat roving bands of Muslim youth sexually assaulting women in crowds. Young women at youth festivals can rest easy now because the cops will distribute anti-groping wristbands. Oh, I'm Scott Ott with Bill Whittle and Stephen Green, and this Right Angle is brought to you by members at BillWhittle.com. Well, men, after a surge in reports of sexual assaults at Swedish youth festivals, the police plan to crack down hard this summer, distributing wristbands that say... Police cordon, hashtag don't grope. As a local police chief explains, and I quote, we're hoping mainly this will help boys to think twice. A lot of them don't think this is a crime, end quote. Now, recently, the police had taken some heat for hiding details of sexual assault reports to avoid inflaming anti-immigrant sentiment. A local newspaper broke the story and claimed that many of the perpetrators were Afghan refugees. Now, Bill Whittle, isn't it good to see law enforcement sending a clear message to sexual predators of all races and religions with this new wristband campaign? I, I for the life of me, I, I will not. I, we've done this version of this show for eight years, Scott, and I will never understand how you can get those devil's advocate questions out without <laughs> without your, your skull splitting open. Uh, you, the, where do you start with this? I think the first thing I want to say, because I think it just needs to be said repeatedly, is this potential anti-immigrant backlash is generated by the immigrants. I, I, I've just, nobody ever talks about this. You know, we've had immigrants in this country, they've had immigrants in Europe, obviously, for hundreds of years. And these people have just assimilated into the culture and there's never been any problems. This group of immigrants in this particular religion is the most violent, aggressive, nasty group of people and they're the most ingrateful group of people I've ever seen. I mean, seriously, these are people who just got off the boat, so to speak. It's not the, it's not the second or third generation of immigrants who suddenly you know, look around and say, geez, I'm bored, I'm going to start a jihad. These are people who've been given their lives, been given their lives back to them and living in a, in a place that is, in fact, absolute heaven compared to where they, le they left. And, and all they want to do is throw chairs at British... Um, Citizens who are sitting out there at a pub drinking beer, as they have for, I don't know, what, a thousand years, two thousand years, and, and telling them that this is against Islam and so on. This backlash is earned. It's earned when you find out that, that of, of the, the total number of rapes committed in Oslo over a five-year period by, um, well, let's just call them Middle Eastern and North African immigrants. You, did you, you guys want to guess what the total number of rapes <laughs> committed by them was in a, in a five-year period? It's huge. It's 100%. It's 100%. Now, when you're dealing with these kind of numbers, to pretend that this doesn't happen is a form of insanity and it's a form of pathological virtue signaling. And that's an awful lot of what drives this. But ultimately, when you get right down to it, guys, it's the same mentality that says, well, we're going to make this a gun-free zone so nobody can get hurt here. As if some jihadi or some homegrown American nutcase has loaded up, you know, 15 weapons and a number of pipe bombs into the trunk of his car. He gets to the college campus where he's going to go in and exact his revenge and achieve his fame. There's no place to park, and he realizes there's a place in front, but it's a no parking zone. So yeah, I guess I might as well just go home and you know cancel the whole thing. I hadn't realized that this was against the law. It's really what these idiots these pro these progressive idiots actually genuinely believe because you said it in your intro they actually genuinely believe that these poor uh you know youths with a different cultural background do not understand that it's not only a crime but it's bad to rape a woman a gang rape a woman and listen to her screams and her and her tears and, and the blood and, and all the rest of that stuff they, they're just unaware of this you, you guys need to be in a, a mental hospital really well, some female skeptics of the uh, anti-groping wristband say the police should be encouraging the public to intervene when they see roving sexual assault squads and that lawmakers should increase the penalty for such crimes. One woman even sarcastically asked if the new wristband would leave an identifiable mark on the guy's face or if it conferred the powers of Wonder Woman's bracelets. Now, well, Stephen Green... Shouldn't these critics back off a bit and at least acknowledge that the police are being proactive about the problem? Oh, thank goodness there are still some critics left. I, I, I'm so pleasantly shocked by that. 
Uh, I, I'm almost flabbergasted that there, there are still some Swedes with enough backbone to, uh, to to call the cops on their idiocy, their lunacy, as Bill said. And actually, uh, Bill, you pretty much took my answer, so I'm going to have to come at this from uh, kind of a weird angle. Uh, a long time ago, Tom Lehrer is just the most viciously funny uh, uh, novelty songwriter ever, or whoever will be. Uh, he skewered the uh, the uh, kind of early protest movement in 62 or 63 with a song called The Folk Song Army that was just 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 brutal and mean and just wickedly funny. And if he were to write that song today, he'd have to call it the hashtag army after the after these idiots in the White House and now in Stockholm who think that putting a hashtag on something means that you've accomplished something. The problem is uh, uh, Tom Lehrer is a man of the left, so today he wouldn't write the song. He would have done it in 1962. He would not do it in 2016, and, and, and what a shame that is. But I think that... On some level, that the Swedes, at least some Swedes, enough Swedes to matter, want this to happen. Uh, P.G. O'Rourke, back in the mid-90s, when he was still writing for Rolling Stone, uh, touring the world and writing these, these, these great pieces on his travels, he, uh, he went to Sweden, he spent uh, a bunch of time there and came back with this, this great report. And he was talking about the sort of natural egalitarianism that seems to be bred into the Swedish people. And he had this, this, this joke that is, you just can't repeat it, so... I'm going to repeat it. He pictures the Vikings returning from raping and pillaging on the British coast, and the, the captain is tallying up what they've accomplished, and he gets to the part where he says, well, Sven had seven rapes, and Nils only had one, so everybody gets to rape Sven. And I think on some level that this attitude is real, and, and the Swedes, at least some Swedes, see this as justice. They see these rapes by these Muslim immigrants as justice for Viking days a thousand years ago. Well, they got to get over this, because if they don't, their culture is going to go away. It's a death wish. And Scott, just one last thing. Sure. If it turns out that the best actions of the Swedish police is to do something that a Girl, Scout, a Girl Scout pack could accomplish, namely issue wristbands and start a hashtag campaign. If that's if that's the best thing that the police force, you know, entrusted with the, the law and order and national safety of the country can do, that says an awful lot to me about the Swedish police force. Well, I, I simply, for one, cannot believe that you guys are speaking this way during National Brotherhood Week. <laughs> Another Tom Lair reference for those who don't know. So... You know, the passive, politically correct attitude of police and politicians to this crime is bad enough, but it's compounded by the bigotry, the bigotry of pretending that Muslim immigrants don't understand that sexual assault is wrong or criminal. It leads to the absurdity of addressing the crime wave with cultural sensitivity training and public awareness wristbands. Sexual assault of strangers in crowds is not a new phenomenon in history, but these bands of young Muslim men have made it a team sport, a rite of passage, and practically the sixth pillar of Islam. These devotees of Muhammad hunt for their prey like velociraptors, making it risky for a woman to go to a concert or to walk to school or to appear in public at all. I would suggest that the police visit local mosques and hand out wristbands that say, WWMD, what would Muhammad do? But then the goal is to end the abuse of women and girls. For Bill Whittle, Stephen Green, and the members of BillWhittle.com, I'm Scott Ott. Thank you for watching Right Angle.